Thank you, Marianne, and thank you for the opportunity to be here. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, what I'd like to do today is uh, spend a few minutes uh, talking about changes in social interactions over the life course and how those might be regulated and uh, the diversity of mechanisms. Because uh, I'll tell you at the outset, I, I've been a comparative endocrinologist my uh, entire life, so I've been focusing on, on uh, those kinds of mechanisms. What I'd like to do first of all is just uh, point out you know, a changing environment that uh, animals, as we know, uh, try to retain stability through change. And um, these changes through the life course can include, obviously, development, postnatal development, but also there are seasonal changes, uh, such as shown here with uh, breeding, migrating, uh, winter or non-breeding, molting, and so forth. And these uh, uh, notes here are, are focused primarily on birds, but in many respects, they are applicable to other vertebrates as well. Changing seasons are often drivers for these changes in life history stages, such as temperature, food, water, day length. And now in a changing world with climate change, uh, demographic changes associated with habitats, so forth, human disturbance, and endocrine disruption. And <coughs> there are a number of behavioral and homeostatic adjustments that animals do uh, go through to maintain the uh, stability uh, including social interactions, and I'm going to focus right down now on territorial aggression as an example of how these might change throughout the life course, not only during development, but uh, across these life history stages. Now, first of all, uh, don't worry, you don't have to remember all of this talk. Uh, I just wanted to point out some of the major mechanisms by which we know invertebrates, and I've worked with most vertebrates from fish to mammals, but I focus mostly on birds, that uh, uh, aggression associated with territoriality can involve this hypothalamo-pituitary gonad access in the production of, of, uh, of steroids, particularly testosterone, that can be uh, circulate bound to a binding protein, where they affect the uh, target cells, in this case a neuron, um, say in the nucleus tenei or the amygdala associated with aggression. And then there are also a number of uh, networks, neuromodulators, neurotransmitters with some examples there. And all of these cascades result in territorial aggression. So what I'm going to do first of all is focus on this endocrine cascade here and the hormone testosterone. And then I'm going to switch to the target organs and talk a little bit about the, uh, the mechanisms that are going here I won't have time to talk about um, this component today, although I will come back to it uh, in a, a, a little bit. So let's focus first of all on the, uh, uh, the hormone cascade here. And um, I'm going to focus today mostly on, on this bird, a song bird that I've worked on for almost 40 years now, a song sparrow. Uh, it is an extremely aggressive uh, uh, bird. We, it's easy to work with in the field as well as in the lab. And uh, one thing we can do with these birds is that we can put a live decoy out in the field and play back songs, tape coded songs through a speaker placed alongside. And then the free living male, and often the female too, will respond to this playback, locate the intruder, and then threaten it and uh, even attack. Uh, they try to attack the bird in the cage there. They'll also attack the speaker from time to time. What this does, it brings the bird out so you can quantify the behavior. You can quantify territorial aggression uh, at many different times in the season. And if we do this, and we look at um, uh, winter, spring, summer, molt, and autumn, if you look at the number of songs during a 10-minute uh, uh, presentation of this decoy and playback, you'll see in spring there is a surge of, of singing behavior in response to this uh, uh, challenge, this simulated territorial intrusion, low during the molt, when they're replacing all of the body feathers and they don't um, respond at all, and then a resurgence of singing in the autumn. If we look at closest approach to the decoy, again, they come much closer in spring versus winter and molt, and then again in autumn, they become um, aggressive once again. Time within five meters of the decoy, again, you see more during the breeding season when they're territorial than in winter or during the molt and then a resurgence here in autumn. And then finally, the number of flights, wing waves and flights around the decoy um, are highest during the uh, spring territoriality, lowest in winter and molt, 
and then high again in the autumn. So what we see here then through one year of the life course is a surge of territorial aggression here in the spring, low in the malt, and another one in autumn with less aggression in the, uh, at the height of winter. So if we then look at the uh, um, pattern of testosterone in the blood of these birds, free living birds, these were all collected in the field, in spring we see this surge of testosterone associated with that uh, 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 recovery of, of territorial behavior. It bounces around during the breeding season and then reaches undetectable levels during malt. But then in autumn, here, yeah, when they begin territoriality yet again, levels of testosterone remain undetectable. So here we have territoriality here in the winter with low levels and malt with low levels, but high levels of, te of testosterone in breeding territoriality, but not outside of the breeding season. So there's been some shift in control mechanisms here. We also know that testosterone in the spring is socially modulated, but how about in the autumn? Well, if we do these simulated territorial intrusions in uh, uh, the breeding season, we see uh, social modulation of testosterone levels, which <coughs> tends to reinforce uh, aggression over a period of several hours to several days following an intrusion, whereas in the autumn we get no response at all, but the behavioral response is the same. We also know that uh, gonadectomy, that is uh, bringing birds in, territorial birds from the field, gonadectomizing, uh, letting them recover, taking them back to their territories, and then uh, um, <coughs> performing these simulated territorial intrusions. The gonadectomy has no effect on territorial aggression in the non-breeding season. They are perfectly capable of defending a territory uh, um, through the autumn and winter. So at that point then, we said, well, we have to look for other ways, other potential mechanisms of the regulation of the same behavior, territorial aggression, in the non-breeding season versus the breeding season. So this brings us now, so, so we're going to leave this behind, this hormone cascade behind, and now look at the responsiveness of a neuron in the uh, uh, brain here to be associated with expression of aggression. And uh, some points to be made here that uh, uh, there are other steroids that are not particularly biologically active in terms of, of aggression that um, can be converted by enzymes in the brain, cholesterol too, to make testosterone and estradiol. Uh, there are enzymes that can metabolize them to various uh, products, and then there are the receptors here. And downstream of that, you've got gene transcription, uh, co-repressors, co-activators, and so forth that I don't have time to talk about today. So. We reached a point where androgen-estrogen regulation of territorial aggression in the breeding season, um, but not, as far as we could tell, at least steroids of gonadal origin in the non-breeding season. And in the 90s, the uh, work on mammals uh, started to look at the production of, of steroids by neurons, by the brain. And it was found that uh, the brain can synthesize steroids de novo from cholesterol, the high steroid levels in the brain, but not plasma, in non-breeding season. And they can regulate enzyme expression in the brain. Now if we look at these enzymes here uh, for uh, sex steroid production, both uh, uh, testosterone and estrogens, uh, there are a number of, of enzymes here that are key, and all of these uh, genes are expressed in the brain, the birds and mammals at least. I'm going to talk about two, 3-beta HSD here, which actually uh, uh, catalyzes the switch from a, a non-biologically active steroid to a biologically active one, such as progesterone. And CYP19, aromatase, that uh, regulates the conversion of androgens to estrogen. And then androgen receptors and estrogen receptors. And if you look at 3-beta HSD, this is work done by Devalina Pradhan and Kiran Soma, um, collaboration with, with us. Again, these are, are tissues collected in the field. We see the red here is uh, um, three beta HSD activity in the non-breeding season in the brain, and it does increase in the autumn in uh, 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 four out of these five groups here. And even in the fifth, it's in the uh, same direction. In several areas of, of the brain here, most of these have been implicated in, in uh, control of aggression. <coughs> Karen Selber, who at the time was a graduate student in my lab, is now at UBC in, in Canada, um, wanted then to go back into the field in the autumn 
And he implanted some spouse with this uh, drug, Fadrazole, which inhibits aromatase. And um, it was then known that testosterone itself does not always regulate aggression. It's, it's the uh, conversion to estradiol in the brain and binding to an estrogen receptor that may be uh, acting on aggression. So he gave them implants of this drug, and with SDI, STIs in the, in the autumn could decrease <coughs> singing, decrease time spent in five meters, um, decrease the numbers of flights, and there wasn't an, a, a significant effect on closest approach, but it was, at least it was in the right direction. So he seemed to have found a way that by blocking formation of estrogen in the brain of these animals that he could inhibit the expression of territorial aggression in the non-breeding season. Now, because Fadrazole is a drug and could potentially have pharma pharmaceutical, pharmacological effects, he also gave another group of birds Fadrazole plus replacement of estradiol and was able to recover territorial aggression uh, quite effectively. So this was really the first demonstration that perhaps the, uh, st the steroid production has switched to or is emphasized more in the brain in the non-breeding season. So what we did next was take a look at uh, um, aromatase biosynthetic activity uh, in different regions of the brain. And we found a significant decrease during malt and then a further increase in the autumn in the, uh, uh, the ventromedial telens cephalon, which includes the nucleus tenei, often thought to be the homologue of the amygdala uh, um, in, in birds, that is very important for expression of aggression. If we also looked at the expression uh, mRNA of uh, aromatase in this area as well, again we saw a decrease during the malt with high levels in the non-breeding and the breeding season. So this is consistent with the uh, effect of uh, regulating aromatase and possibly 3-beta HSD as well in the brain to uh, promote brain synthesis of steroids rather than from the gonad in the non-breeding season. When we looked at estrogen receptors, the beta type receptor, no difference uh, with season or any of these brain areas. The same for estrogen receptor alpha, no differences. It doesn't seem that the receptor gene expression is being uh, changed at all. Now, if you look at androgen receptor, uh, the only difference we see is a higher level during the breeding season. We don't see any resurgence of an androgen receptor in the autumn. So it does appear that the enzymes are the uh, uh, locus here for regulation of sex steroid production in the brain with the potential to regulate um, aggressive behavior. And then finally, what uh, Devalina Pradhan was able to do for her PhD was show that the um, expression or the activity of 3-beta HSD activity in, in two areas of the brain associated with a control of aggression could be regulated by uh, social interactions. So the simulated territorial intrusion in the breeding season increases testosterone in the blood, does not in the autumn, but it does increase 3-beta HSD activity. So here uh, was a, a new um, way of, of looking at regulation of um, aggression during the, the, uh, the life course, at least over the seasons here, that in the breeding season, one has gonadal androgen synthesis here uh, that is turned off in the winter and during malt, but then in the non-breeding season, neural androgen synthesis takes over. So, uh, control of territorial aggression during the life course. The steroids are not of uh, gonadal origin, they're not always involved. And enzymes in brain regions that can make testosterone estradiol de novo from cholesterol or from precursors such as um, DHA, dehydroepiandrosterone, from the adrenal gland. So circulating pre precursors such as DHEA, which I didn't have a chance to talk about. The enzymes through beta HSD and aromatase do appear to be regulated. We have no idea how those are regulated. We know they can be regulated so by social interactions. We don't know what the mechanism is yet. So what this suggests is there's a diversity of mechanisms that illustrates how organisms can manage state transitions in their life cycles in ways that we really couldn't have imagined you know, 10, 15 years ago. And what I want to do is just end up with this um, uh, chart here that gives you an idea of the control of territorial aggression in vertebrates. And this is really highly conserved across vertebrates, uh, from fish to mammals, birds, reptiles, and so forth. 
that there are many components here of this neuroendocrine endocrine cascade. There is this component, a binding protein that can transport testosterone and regulate its uh, uh, entry into target cells. And then once you're in the, in the uh, target cell, there are several other areas that can regulate the response of that target cell. And then we have the, the neuron networks, neuromodulators, neurotransmitters here that I didn't have time to talk about today. The ones in red show that in our, our birds, at least, that these are ones that have been shown to be regulated over the life course, breeding season, non-breeding season, uh, during development, and so forth, and suggest here that the, um, although the, the overall pathway is highly conserved, there are numerous ways in which you can tweak it and get the same response. So we're getting a new sort of appreciation here for the fact that um, there may be multiple ways in which you can regulate uh, a social behavior such, or any behavior such as territorial aggression. And um, there's now in other vertebrates, all of these other areas too, I think there are about 100 different sites now that, uh, uh, across vertebrates that have been shown to be modulated uh, that can have this, this same effect. So what we're starting to see now is a partial explanation as to why we see so much diversity in so-called mechanisms of regulation of aggression. Uh, across species, but also among populations within species. And now we're seeing, uh, starting to see variation in what is being tweaked among individuals within a population. So uh, if, if you tweak this, you tweak that, you tweak that, and you get the same result, then it doesn't matter where you do it, uh, you're going to uh, get the same result. And uh, perhaps there's only selection for specific sites under very um, uh, severe uh, conditions, which we may see uh, eventually. But the main point here I want to leave is that although there is conservation in the overall mechanisms here from brain to target organ and actual uh, behavior, there is great diversity in, in where it can be tweaked. And I'll stop there.